so this one might need to go into part one and part two and i have notes because this is a doozy it's very interesting if you're interested in extremely rare diseases and it's very interesting um, if you want to hear about like um in the u.s what the healthcare system is like when you get a diagnosis for a lot of people and i am a nurse with a lot of years of experience and i have been a case manager for many years of my career and yet i still could not get the care that i needed and you'll hear all about it the first thing i want to tell you is that this is going to be about a diagnosis called cutaneous t-cell lymphoma or ctcl for short and i was diagnosed with this a year and a half ago although i had it for three years prior to that my first real skin lesions occurred in 2019. so i want to first explain what is ctcl it is a t-cell lymphoma it's a non-hodgkin's lymphoma it is not skin cancer so that's um, something that a lot of people think because it um, manifests in the skin comes out in the skin that it must be some type of skin cancer it is not I'm going to refer to my notes a lot of times like I mentioned just bear with me with this it is very interesting I'll start off just explaining a little bit about it and what it gets misdiagnosed as because that's what's really important I yes it's rare but I think that a lot of people have this they just have no idea that they have cutaneous lymphoma they have been misdiagnosed so many times or they manage it themselves at home with things like aquaphor or over-the-counter steroid or something like that so they just say this thing's coming and going for most of my life i guess it's fine but unless you have a biopsy and you see a specialist somebody who specializes in this you're never going to get a real uh, accurate diagnosis okay it's not skin cancer it is a type of lymphoma it's a non-hodgkin's lymphoma what is it misdiagnosed as most often it's misdiagnosed as eczema or in my case because there are different types of ctcl and i'll go over those and which type i have but um some of some of these lesions are open source and they've been diagnosed as bug bites like me how about just you got a really unusual rash i'm going to give you some topical steroids put this on uh take some oral steroids for the itch and um you know if it gets better great so it's just a weird rash so that might be something you get diagnosed with for years without proper treatment so there are different types of ctcl like i mentioned it's a rare type of cancer that begins in the white blood cells called the t cells which are part of your immune system i'll get to what their theory is on the causes of this uh, later because i want to mention that just a few weeks ago i went to the um, cutaneous t-cell foundation conference in southern california how rare is it let's just look at that real quick so um, it is estimated that approximately 350 people are diagnosed with ctcl in the uk a year and 3,000 people or maybe 3,500 are diagnosed a year in the united states I wanted to jump in here for clarification real quick. So actually the incidence rate of CTCL is about 12.4 cases per million persons per year as of 2023, and that's the NIH.gov. But the uh, one person or 1 1.2 per million per year is the type that I have, which is the primary cutaneous anaplastic large cell lymphoma. The types are mycosis fungoides all right who named these things i don't know it has nothing to do with fungus at all it's a type of a cutaneous t-cell lymphoma rash and i will be putting lots of pictures in so i didn't get diagnosed with my mycosis fungoides it's the most common type the next common type is called cesare syndrome i didn't get diagnosed with that one either and then further on down, you might have primary B cell or you might have primary cutaneous anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which is what I was diagnosed with. And there's also another type, subtype called 
lymphomatoid papulosis. And lymphomatoid papulosis and anaplastic large cell lymphoma, both are the only those two have a protein on the cell called a CD30 lymphoproliferative disorder, which is saying that that CD30 is attached to the cell. Um, and those two that I mentioned, the ones that I've been diagnosed with, have it. That's why I, there's so much I don't know and I'm still learning, but that's why I hear that sometimes people with the CD30 types can, it can progress to um, systemic Hodgkin's. The treatments are a lot of topicals, different types of topical steroids. And at the conference, there were a lot of people there that were representing the pharmaceutical companies and different types of medications on the market. Mostly what I saw was for mycosis fungoides because that is the most popular, so to speak, common type of CTCL. I didn't see anything specific to my kind, but I did see a couple types of topical steroids, one mixed with a retinoid, that are out, um, that are better than your other typical um, types of topical steroids because they really don't work all that well. Uh, what else? There's UV light therapy, radiation, methyltrexate, systemic or topical chemotherapy, nitrogen master, different types of IV therapies. How is this diagnosed? Well, you have to have a good history and physical. You have to go to a specialist that has seen this, that is that knows about this, and can um, decipher whether or not this is just a bug bite or not, or eczema. You've got to get a, a biopsy, punch biopsy, maybe for the flat type of rash that is large and all over the body, or in my case, I had on my hand and my arm and my fingers where it started. I'll insert pictures, but mine started that way with a small lesion that progressed really fast. Like within five days, it's a it's a unattractive, oozing, a weepy, gross looking um, lesion, abscess looking thing. It looks terrible. And in my situation, it took four full months before it was done going through um, the whole process of the changes that it made. And I'll keep referring to this last one that I had that started here. Within days, it's big, it's red, it's oozing, it's got a very unusual looking top to it. And then my whole hand peeled up to my arm. Then it starts to dry up. I kept it covered the whole time that I had it. Back to the diagnosis. You want to go to somebody who hopefully has seen something like this before. They're gonna do a history of physical, take a picture of it, get a biopsy, send it off to pathology. If things look questionable, you might progress on to labs and a PET scan like I did. So um, you're gonna see dermatologist, the pathologist is going to be involved. And in my case, hematology oncologist, radiation oncologist, and um, I have settled it, Seattle Cancer Care Alliance for somebody, with somebody there who is an expert in this. That's my encouragement to you is to, if, if you have a lesion that's not healing or you're questioning it or something seems wrong, go somewhere else and see if you can get a better diagnosis or just ask, could you please, could you please biopsy this? Just, I, I just wanna know. If it looks like um, mycosis fungoides, I'll put some pictures up. What are the causes of this? Does it go away? Does CTCL ever go away? No, it does not go away. It goes into remission. Can it progress to a systemic or internal type of cancer? Um, yes, it can. And that's what in many uh, things I'm going to explain here scare me. And I, I try not to worry about it, but how can you not? Um, I hope that that never happens to me. 
but it happens to others and it can happen. When I asked the researcher at the conference, um, when he took only a very few questions at the end, he said, I'll only take burning questions. I have a really burning question. I want to know what percentage of us that have this will progress on to having 25% or one out of four will go on to have uh, it in their lymph nodes and then progress further into different stages of systemic lymphoma. 25%. Um, my doctor at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance does not agree with that number when I asked her before, but that's what he says is the latest information. By the way, I'm going to list below some areas that will be helpful, like the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, information, cityofhope.org, Lymphoma Research Foundation, lymphoma.org, and Yale Medicine, where I think there's a lot of really good information out there. I didn't even know there was a foundation. Remember, I started off with a dermatologist who knew zero about this and misdiagnosed me for a very, very long time. And even when I finally got the pathology report back, she still said, um, it sounds like it's just a blip in your life and I just wouldn't even think about it anymore. Just try not to think about it or worry about it. Put it on the back burner. Um, I had no support system. I had no specialist she referred me to. Okay, I hope that that explains a little bit about what is C what CTCL is, that there are some different types of it, that the way that you can get it diagnosed properly is by a biopsy. Um, and in my case, it went off to pathology and that pathology person sent it off to another pathology uh, lab up in Seattle. I didn't even know your... Are they sending off what they see in a computer? Are they literally sending off a piece of your skin that was taken out? What are they sending? There's so many things I don't know. Anybody out there know how that works? How do you share a piece of pathology? Uh, I now want to discuss in part two, what happened to me? How did I finally get diagnosed with something that is called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? It still circulates through your body, but manifests into your skin. Um, how do you live with this? Where do you find support? So I'm going to go into part two now, since this is taking a bit of time, and explain my personal story.